This is a great opportunity for Jeff Mott. These people are behind him, but they know he's got his work cut out for him. Jerry Rome, formerly the number one contender for the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. If determination counts for anything in life, Atlanta's Jerry Rome should go all the way. For at 28 years of age, this former number one world contender has the fierce desire to win the PKA World Heavyweight Crown despite all adversity. When Rome met reigning champion Ross Scott for the PKA's unlimited world heavyweight title. Weighing in at 197, Rome gave up 26 pounds to Scott. But capitalizing on his speed, power, timing, and ability to punch backing up, he floored the champion twice in the third round. Scott, surprisingly, came back in round seven, though, to win by TKO. After several more bouts, Rome suffered a detached retina and for six years was out of action. Inspired by the comeback of Sugar Ray Leonard in boxing, Jerry climbed back into the karate ring in June of last year against the number 10 super heavyweight contender, William Eves. He knocked Eves down five times in route to a fifth round TKO and proclaimed to the world that he was back. This opportunity to fill the vacant U.S. heavyweight title against Jeff Mont is the second step in his comeback effort. After a long layoff, I've been working very hard and I'm very happy to have this opportunity. And after I win the U.S. title fight, I hope I get a chance in the near future fight for the world's heavyweight title. Jeff Mott would like to spoil Rome's comeback plans, even though he knows he's the underdog. Mr. Rome has been around for quite a few years, and I'm awful glad to have the opportunity to fight him tonight. Uh, I hope he's not underestimating me because he's going to be in for a big surprise. Jeff Mott is indeed an aggressive young fella who cannot be underrated. For his regular sparring partner is world champion Brad Hefton, and that certainly paid off for him in his previous bouts. And now Jeff Mott meets Jerry Rome in the most important bout of his career, that is to fill the PKA's vacant U.S. crown. And equally important, this is very important for Jerry Rome, if he is to realize his dream. While the two fighters put on their gloves, let's take this time out. Two of the hardest hitting videos ever offered can now be yours for up to 58% off the regular price. The padded part of the gloves, not the floor. If I send you to a neutral corner, remain there until I call you out. Okay? Clenching is against the rules. Two warnings, and then you'll start losing points. Let's have a good fight, gentlemen. There's the touch of the gloves, and we're ready to go. This is nine rounds for the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. Jerry Rome in the red, Jeff Mott in the black. Jerry Rome, 29 years of age, Jeff Mott, 22. Jerry Rome has more experience, 25 wins, Jeff Mott only nine. Here we go, let's see what happens. Nine, two minute rounds. Jeff Mott is hungry. We yeah. saw Jeff Mott in uh, October down in Miami, and he is a very strong puncher. He trains quite a bit with Brad Hefton. This is a good barometer for Jerry Rome. This is a little unusual for Jerry Rome. I haven't seen him uh, talk to an opponent like this in the past. He's usually all business-like when he goes out there. Good left-right combination by Jerry. the impression that Jerry Rome may not have the kind of intestinal fortitude that it takes to come back against Brad Hefton and he wanted to test that early on. He's hungry. There's a warning out for holding for Jerry Rome. We talked about the kind of psych that the hometown fans can give you. have to take into consideration here in the first round that again Jerry Rome had that eye injury and you notice how he's pulling his head back he certainly doesn't want to get hit in the head and that might be a, a reflection of the eye injury that's uh, something that he's always done a Muhammad Ali who used to pull his head back away from punches surprisingly good footwork for big men Ten seconds left in round number one. Good body 
shot there by Jerry Rome as we end round number one. You need straight punches, you hear me? Your kicks are excellent. Don't be back in the straight corner line. here with Jeff Mott. Okay? Watch it, watch it. Right in here, take the midsection on your kicks and straight hand punches. You're coming round Am on I the wrong? outside. Okay. Come right straight off the shoulder and you got him. You're leaning back on him. Don't stop on him. Circle and throw that punch, okay? You're looking good, baby. Okay. Jerry Rome is a little bit off balance through this entire first round with Mont trying to get to him. Mont didn't hurt him, but Mont was surely the aggressor in round number one. You can see the advice that was given to him in the corner. They said punch straight. You can see him looping his punches there, right. which takes a lot of uh, steam out of him. Uh, right, and very ineffective when they come around right. and miss. Here we go in action in round two. Jerry Rome in the red, Jeff Bond in the black. How did you score the first round, Joe? I had the first round for Jeff Mott, 10-9. Not that he actually hurt Rome, but he did have him off balance much of the round. Well, I'll tell you, these fans here in Rockford, Illinois, are really pulling for their hometown favorite, Jeff Mott. They would love to see him win the U.S. Heavyweight Championship to go along with the other fine titles that are held here. Good shot there by Jerry Rome. Caught Jeff Mott coming out of the corner. Mott's coming in with wide, long shots. Rome's leaning his head back out of the way, taking a miss. Rome's still not settled down. Well, I'll tell you, a secure layoff is a long layoff, and it's going to take three, four, five, six fights to get his timing back. There's a big difference between working in the gym and working uh, in the ring, Joe. His coach, A.C. Gordon, would like him to have at least six solid fights before he takes a bad hit. Shows amazing all-around ability. Good footwork, good... Twenty seconds left in round number two. Pace of the fight slowing down just a little bit. Mike's confidence, I think, is dropping somewhat from what it was in the first round. You can kind of feel it in the audience there. They don't quite have the confidence in Jeff that they had. When Mike gets hit, though, that's when he gets stronger to see. There's the bell ending round number two. Jerry Rome with the heel kick, the hook kick coming up around the gloves into the face and Mont came strong out of that corner to retaliate. That's a good view of the Metro Center here as Jerry Rome in the red comes out to beat Jeff Mont in the black for round number three. Let's check out Joe Corley's unofficial scoring through two rounds. I gave the first round to Mott, I gave the second round to Jerry Rome, 10 nine, so I've got a 10 nine each round, 19 19 total. This is a 10 point must, three judges decide. The referee does not have a vote. That was not a knockdown. Mott just lost his balance. That was called trying to knock the side of a bar down with a punch and it moved. Spinning back kick, almost a spinning back axe kick. Crescent kick, that's called. Under the arm of Rome. It's nice to see a big man execute a spinning back kick like that and keep it nice and compact. Yes, and over the rounds, uh, it takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of you, those uh, the very effective over the rounds. Notice the 
there's no clinching in PK karate, and even though they may get tangled up with their arms, they both step back and break. No, that's a great rule. It keeps all the action moving. Winding down the last 10 seconds of round three. For round four, Jerry Rome in the red, Jeff Bont in the black. You still see some rust on Jerry Rome. You can see the talent, but the rust is still there. As we said earlier, it will take some fights to get it all smoothed out. Mine says so what? It's interesting that neither one of the fighters wants to work inside. They both want to stay at long range. Asa Gordon told Jerry Rome in the corner to rock in and rock out. Two more kicks, two more kicks. Good body shot by Jerry Rome. Another body shot, and that was to the kidneys, but Mott was spinning around at the time. It was unintentional. But, uh, as we said, spars regularly with Brad Hefton, so you know what kind of intestinal fortitude he's got, and he's developed a keen defense, I guess, to keep him alive in the gym. It was a slip that was not a knockdown. Rome seems to be having a little bit of difficulty with the awkwardness of Jerry. I mean, of uh, Mont. Mont's still a little bit predictable, of his, unpredictable, I should say, at this point in his career. And that's, as you said, what's giving uh, Rome the trouble. Right. We, both, we have both fighters looping their punches, too. Neither one are firing straight out. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Just pat him with the right hand on the arms. And Asa Gordon it. telling uh, Rome to come around the arms as he did then with that front leg you catching him with that heel kick. Now almost Remember, Jeff Mott's over six oh, yeah. feet, three inches tall. The front leg just I'm comes up and slaps him on the side of the head. That was a great replay there, incidentally, fellas. Good camera work there. You really see everything right. PKA pros do that. That's right, I tell you. We're ready to go with action no. in round five. Here comes Jerry Rome out to meet Jeff Mott. Nine rounds for the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. Another rung up the ladder to the World Heavyweight Championship. Mott's right here in his hometown with Brad Hefton, but that's the man, his friend, who he would have to take a title from if Brad still had it at that time. Through four rounds, how do you have it scored, Joe? I had Rome winning the last round, 10-9, so I've got him up by one, 39-38. Rome still not in his stride. You're right, young Jeff seems to get a lot more aggressive when he's hurt or been hit. Kick, Jeff, kick! Shows a lot of heart. Fans fighters know that you're very vulnerable if you flash back in while you're so angry. <laughs> Leg caught there on the top rope, gets forced to sit by Rome, didn't take advantage of it. Bobby Arnell was there to make sure he did. Pace is slowing down here, midway through the fifth round. Nine rounds for the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. Rome leans back. He looks very awkward, and he tries to fire some punches off of that position, which is very difficult. It's hard to be leaning back and punching. He caught, and then leaning back, moving back, caught him up with a solid right hand. Didn't do mine a bit of good. Ten seconds left in round five. Oh, a good right. They're not calling that a knockdown. They're calling that a slip. I thought the 
The puck set him down. I couldn't see it land, so I couldn't tell whether it went down from the force of the right hand or not. Well, there's the end of round five, and we're back in the corner with the Jeff Mudd. Seems to be all right. Let's see if his eyes are a little crazy. I'm tired of seeing you walk around with him chasing you. Now you go. All right, let's take a look at this replay, Joe. Rome closes with a fast hook. The right hand did not land on the face, so it was a good call by uh, Bob Yarnell. Backward momentum from uh, Jeff. Right hand, yeah. His own glove hit him in the face, so it was not the force of Rome's blow that knocked him down. Now start throwing them punches straight and start going after him. Tell me what you're going to do. The Rome punches in route might just tangle up in his own feet more than anything else. Right. Well, I tell you, when you have the benefit of those replays from three different angles, it sure makes us look good, huh? You can tell whether it landed or not, right? Because where we saw it here, I thought it might have made connection. There's the whistle for the seconds to move out. We're ready to go now with action in round six. Jerry Rome in the red, Jeff Mon in the black. U.S. heavyweight championship on the line. And through five rounds, Joe, how do you have it scored? I've got Rome up by two, 49-47, but uh, he, Jerry Rome is not in his stride. Jeff Mon is... There's a good right. There's a knockdown. He may be in trouble now. He may not get up. He is stunned. That's Rome moving backwards with that right hand. Doesn't look like a whole lot. Oh, he is still groggy. He is still groggy. They're going to have to watch this. They're going to have to watch this very close. Bobby Arnell. He's going to stop it. He goes down again. That's all. Fight's over. TKO in the sixth round. Oh, that was quick. That was so quick. Jeff walked into one. He is still down. Jeff really walked into one. It came from nowhere. Uh, as um, Jerry was moving backwards, which is an amazing punching ploy. It is, isn't it? He the, generated all of the power with the strength of the arm. He sure did. The crowd is understandably not uh, pleased with the outcome, but Rome just waited, caught him in the perfect spot on the way in. It totally undid Mont's equilibrium. He couldn't get it back together. And as you see, there's Jeff Mont still a glassy-eyed. Uh, they're... Hey, he wants to get up now, and they're going to put him on the stool. Rome backing up. You saw that right, right at the ear. Same knockdown, different angle. Look at Rome backing up, leaning back, as we said. The force of his blow That's amazing. forces amazing. him back. He did that to Ross Scott, who outweighed him by 26 pounds uh, in 1977. It's almost a sucker-like punch because uh, you never expected to come with the, uh, come at you with that kind of force. That second knockdown, Bob Yarnell was on his way to him there and actually helped break part of Jeff Munn's fall. I tell you, Jerry Rome got everything you would want from Jeff Munn, however. Okay, let's get the official time of the TKO in the sixth round by going up to ring announcer Mike Marino. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Robert Yarn Yarnell stops this contest 37 seconds into the sixth round. The winner and new PKA United States heavyweight champion, Jerry Rome! Jerry Rome! Jerry Rome captures the U.S. crowd and gets a...